Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag, the all mailbag show here on AMC Movie News, where all we do is take your mailbag questions. We are actually pre recording this one since the four of us are all together in Atlanta. We actually were recording this earlier in the week when we were in Atlanta for the AMC Leadership Conference. So we are still doing mailbag, though. We thought it'd be fun to do it from here. So join the OGs. Me. The yeah. OG crew okay. is sitting here, sitting on my right, of course, Mr. John Schnepp. What's up, everybody? Long time that I've done a mailbag. I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, it has been a while, right? <laughs> Over here with Stephen Rose Eisenbach. Long time that I've done a mailbag. <laughs> And of course, Mr. Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone. So um, we no Ashley today because Ashley did not come with us to uh, to Atlanta, obviously. But we are just taking your mailbag questions. By the way, guys, if you want to see one of your questions, a topic or comment, whatever you'd like to see on the show, just email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail .com, and maybe you'll see your question get answered on air on AMC Movie Talk or maybe on AMC Mailbag. So, Amy Rose, you picked out all the questions this week. So what have we got? Taking it away, James Walsh wrote, "Hello, AMC." Having recently watched Drive, I could not help but think this is a special movie. It helps me wonder how on earth the Oscars could not nominate it for Best Picture. When you look at 2011, it is not the best year for film, and when you look at this list for Best Pick nominations again, it's not the best. It's surprising to me that it was overlooked, especially since they nominated Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, which is a movie that only has a 46% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and did not deserve the Best Pick nom it got. What are your guys' opinions on Drive, and do you think it should have been nominated that year. I'm going to go ahead and start this off. Um, I love Drive. It is much, it's close to a cinematic masterpiece in my opinion. Everything about it. I mean, Nicholas Winning Refn is a phenomenal director. He really evokes emotion from you. It's so stylish. It's beautiful. And even with very little dialogue, he creates characters like Ryan Gosling's characters that are very powerful. The score, the shots, everything. And he's very brutal in his just realism, you know, especially with the gory aspects of it. So I actually thought it was a masterpiece, but it is still a genre film and it is still has a smaller audience. I think it is very acknowledged as being a pretty incredible film, but you know, it doesn't scream Academy to me. The film that you mentioned does. I mean, beyond just having Tom Hanks and some of the other people in it, it screams Academy. So I could have predicted out of the two, but a lot of my favorite films are all not nominated a lot of the times. Dennis, I know you love Drive. What do you think? Yeah, I just, uh, it's one of those things where maybe it's just not in the Oscars wheelhouse. I mean, there's a lot of, you talked about movies, you know, Mud was my favorite movie, of, uh, was it 2013? That didn't get nominated for Best Picture. It's just one of those things. I didn't see, what was that movie? Uh, out loud or Up whatever. Uh, and, or yeah, I didn't see Extremely loud and incredibly and close. close. The Tom Hanks film. <laughs> so I can't <laughs> even remember what it's called. Yeah, so I can't judge <laughs> yeah, that one in particular, but I've seen in many other years, like I remember The Reader was uh, nominated right. for Oscars one year, and I was like, that and I watched it. I was like, "This doesn't deserve." But it was that a better just book. happens. Well, I mean, I, I don't accept the idea that because it's a smaller film, like, lots of tiny little small yeah. films get nominated for Whiplash. an Academy Award. You know, stuff like that. Birdman is a tiny little film. Uh, you know, a lot of these films are. Should Incredibly Close have been nominated for Best Picture? No, no, it shouldn't have. No, no it shouldn't have. But. Drive shouldn't have either, in, in just my opinion. I thought Drive was a very good movie. I, I, I disagree about it being a masterpiece. I thought it was a very good movie, but it was kind of one tone to me, like from beginning to end. And I thought it was very good. I, I love what Refn did with it, and I, I think he's a great director. But I wouldn't have had it, yeah, I might have had it in my top ten that year, but I, I wouldn't have been really strong consideration for me personally for Best Picture, even though I think it's a very good film. But so you if, don't think the genre isolates some people from the interest? I don't think interest? so. You don't think so? No, not really. I mean, when I look at some of the films that the, the Academy nominates, I think they're pretty broad. I mean, if it, if it was like a comedy, I'd yeah. say yes. Yeah. But this comedy. dark, whatever, yeah, a lot well, of the Academy seems to love that kind of stuff. That right. was completely left out, and I think it's because it was so I, dark. I, except for American Sniper, I wouldn't have had Nightcrawler nominated for Best Picture. Also, Nightcrawler is a black comedy. Well, exactly. It's like, a, it's you dark. know, Thriller guys, by dark, a dark comedy. But uh, I, you know, for me, I loved Drive, but I liked Valhalla Rising even, even more. Better, yeah, me too. Even better, and that's like it's such a like that's a divisive film. Oh, it's I a love polarizing that. film. Uh, some people really hate it. You know, I really love it, but it's like. Would I think that uh, Mads Mikkelsen would be, uh, you know, nominated for Oscar for Valhalla Rising? Absolutely never, because it's not, it's not, it's not in the Academy's mind space of what is an Oscar-winning performance. Exactly. To me, I think it was an Oscar-winning performance for my b individual baby brain Oscars that happened in my <laughs> head. But as far as uh, the entire populace, I would never impose my my particular 
set of uh, you know conditions for what I think is a great film. I love Drive. Mm -hmm. I think it was in the top ten for yeah. me personally. Would I say it has to be in everyone else's top ten, especially the Oscars? No. So I didn't feel it was like robbed of an Oscar. No. Or did it deserve an Oscar? It's like an Oscar is just like so another like thing you put on your shelf. Yeah. And it's something that's faded away. Uh, so many movies that I love never were nominated for Oscars and never won an Oscar. Yet they are the all-time best films ever made, and they're in books that you can read about the top 100 movies ever made. Made, half of those aren't Oscar nominated. So yeah. what is an Oscar really? But like, you know, the the you know, the you're in high school and it's like everyone's clapping for the, you know, the, the prom queen. It's not as big as like that, the prom queen or king. It's but it's, you know, popularity contest. It's, you know, all that stuff is wedged into the awards ceremony. And you have to just kind of understand that. That Birdman was nominated, I'm so happy about. Yeah. You know, so there's certain ones that sometimes are acknowledged that you're like, yeah, finally, get with it, Academy. You know, yeah. but other, otherwise, it's it really does feel like a driving Miss Daisy sometimes. So they're trying driving to live that. Yeah, they're trying <laughs> to live that down. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's right now we're in the middle area. So, yeah, yeah. long-windedly, I say, you know, it doesn't really matter. Hey, as long as you like Drive, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't think it's a snub. I right. just think it was really better than the other film that was nominated. But, again, there is a formula. There were several films that were yeah. better. Than There's a formula. Close. I think some films <laughs> yeah. are really easy to predict that the Academy are going to go for. Mm. All right. Kyle Cruz, Cruz wrote, hey, AMC, love the show. Watch it daily. Whenever I go to talk to my friends about movies such as Birdman or Selma, it seems nobody knows what movies I'm talking about. Is this due to poor marketing? Why does it seem the best movies are the ones no one knows about? Thanks and great job with the show. Because part of the reality is a lot of these really great films, look, Everybody has different tastes and are attracted to certain types of movies, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's great. Some people really like just big explosion movies. Some people like romantic comedy. Some people just want comic book films, and that's cool. And not all films are for everybody. That's just the way it is. But it is kind of unfortunate that there are a lot of these that a lot of film fans will not check out these incredible yep. films. You know, we're talking like Birdman or Theory of the Everything. A, a lot of the indie stuff like that. These are a lot of the best films of the year. And then and then they complain when the Oscars come around. It's like Oh, they're just nominated all movies none of us saw. Well, whose fault is that? That's your fault. Because it was out there, and you heard guys like, you know, um, you like Jeremy Johns, you heard guys like Schmoes, you heard guys like us telling you how good those movies are. And so you didn't don't, watch it. And you decided not to watch it. And that's cool because not every movie's for everybody. But then don't complain when Oscars come around and goes, how come the only nominate movies that nobody saw? Well, because they were the best movies of the year. Uh, go check them out. So it's... But look, but on their surface, you know, you look like a, you look at a Selma, that doesn't have broad market appeal where everybody's going to get excited about going to the movies, even though, I mean, we knew the quality of people going into it, so we were excited to see it, and we saw it, and it was as good as we hoped it would be. Same with a lot of these things, like Birdman and all that kind of Birdman crap. Birdman got but, a lot of recognition, though. Yeah, but not a ton of people went to go see it. So, I, I mean, it's, it's not that they don't get enough marketing, because... These people know, these studios, marketing these films cost tens and tens and tens and tens of millions and millions and millions of dollars. And if they know, goodness gracious, we're going to be spending more money on marketing than it's going to bring in. So they got to be, they got to temper their marketing. It's really unfortunate. It's just that people need to start seeing more great indies. People need to start seeing more of these great, like smaller films because just because they're small, don't have explosions and don't have Spider-Man in them doesn't mean they're not awesome. You should check them yeah, out. Let me add that you also, when a movie opens... You have to, if you want to see an independent film, when it opens, you have to go see it. Go because it. Uh, in order for a movie like Birdman to expand, remember, this is a business. In order for a, a movie like Bi yeah, yeah. Birdman to expand in, into more theaters, like a lot of people are like, it's not even playing. I have to drive an hour to see Birdman. Well, hopefully the word of mouth on Birdman, like it did, what happened was then it did expand yeah. to more theaters. More people were able to see it, but that's because it made enough money to validate the expansion. So when you hear about an independent film that you've had your eye on and you want to see and it's listed as coming out on a very specific date, do everything in your power to see it that Friday or Saturday. If you can, if you're planning on seeing it, try to see it opening weekend because those numbers count and those yeah. numbers yeah. move yeah. those Big. movies into bigger theaters. It expands the marketing aspect of it because you're helping it. So that's what all independent films rely on you to actually help them move forward. Right. And there's also the this little show called AMCI Indie Spotlight <laughs> and we talk about all the incredible indie films and a lot of them have small windows and even if they do you know okay they might not bring it back because of you know the relationship or whatever it might play for one week so you have to get in and you know money speaks that is exactly 
it just it just does. So um, a lot of these great films, Nightcrawler reopened. I mean, Whiplash reopened. A lot of them. So word of mouth is really big in this industry and the VOD market. And there's a lot of things that are affecting indies. But yeah, if you love it, go support it and check it out because we're bringing attention to a lot of smaller, amazing films. Well, the thing with okay, Birdman, I kind of understand. It's more of a niche film. I loved it. I think it did as well as it, I guess, could have done. Selma, on their hand, I think has a broader appeal than they even tried to market it as. Because, you know, it's Martin Luther King. Right. Like, it's yeah. also the LBJ it's, controversy, though. Which yeah, but, the, you know, Zero Dark Three had some controversy. It, I think a small percentage of people were affected by the yeah, controversy, though. I yeah, I think it that one they could have marketed dominant, better. I think it yeah. could have been marketed better. Yeah, it, it with had, Selma, I'm going to agree with you, actually, yeah. on Selma. I think you're right. That's a good point. All right. All right, what's next? Sean Breslin wrote, Hi, love your show. Lately I've been thinking of the possibility of a remake of the original Jaws. At first I thought it would be a bad idea, but I thought of a possible better idea. What if they told the story through the point of view of Quint? They could tell his story on the Indianapolis during the first act and then have the second and third acts being the original story of Jaws. I think this could be a fresh idea for a new Jaws. You seem passionate, Schnapp. What do you think? Uh, I love the original Jaws. I like that. that uh, that's an interesting take on the Jaws storyline, showing Quentin's uh, history. I personally like loved just hearing the actor, like they had such an amazing uh, Robert Shaw do that role. And I believe John Milius wrote that specific like uh, story, that, mm -hmm. that specific like three page story of his like, origin of like, you know, his story. Um, I don't know, you know what? I'm, I'm on the fence about a remake on Jaws. Is it time for a remake on Jaws? Yes. I horribly think Sharknado <laughs> when uh, I hear anyone say a remake yeah. of Jaws, because it's like, look, we have Shark Week. It's well, on all the time. What about Or any of the making fun of, sh of Jaws <laughs> type or things. Or Blue Deep. Or what was that or one? Deep Blue Deep Sea. Deep Blue Sea. Sea. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if they, if they really took the time out to actually make a really good Open water. remake of Jaws. Look, sharks are scary. Like, you're floating around and there's a thing under. You know, it's like, hey, that's a real scary yeah. idea. If, if, so if they it's keep terrifying. that reality of the terror of a real shark and it's like this is kind of like a larger than regular sized shark. I mean, in our world now, I mean, back in the 70s, that, that was frightening and it kept everyone away from the beach. Everyone was freaked out oh, yeah. when that movie came out. The world we live in now, it might not have the same impact. It depends on how they made the film, what angle they're going to take with that film. But I, th I think a remake would be uh, would be... Okay, you know, I, Spielberg did an incredible movie, so it's kind of hard to top that. Whenever yeah. I think about Jaws, I cannot help but start. Sleep and I want to go home. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> right. I had a little drink about an hour ago when I went straight to my head. That's what, like, one of my all-time favorite scenes in movies ever. I love that scene. I, when you're, it's funny because, yeah, well, and the, the theme, of course. When you start reading the question, I thought you were going to say, what about a Jaws where you told from the perspective of the shark? That was, see, I'm in. I, I'm, I'm totally I was insane. I think about Finding Nemo Shark. He was great. Now, oh. here's, my, here's my worry, though. If you do, I'm all for remakes. I am totally all for remakes. Everybody knows that. Because if you make it and it sucks, who cares? You still got the original. Right. But my fear of a Jaws remake would be to the original Jaws focused on the human element of it, mm -hmm. on the human experience faced with this nightmarish terror, right? Yeah. And it's really about the characters. That movie was about these three guys. Yeah. The movie wasn't about the shark. My fear is if you do a remake today, it's like, well, now we got all this CGI, and I right. love CGI. I'm all for the advancements in technology, but I want now they're gonna have this big CGI shark doing all these wild things, roaring underwater. Yeah. Like, all this kind of stuff. I mean, that yeah. would be my fear, and I fear they would lose the essence of what Jaws is, which is a character movie. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. What do you guys it think? It doesn't need it, and that's the thing. A lot of these remakes are to have the technological advancements of today, and the suspense was just seeing it happen in these, you know, unsuspecting expecting people swimming in the water and this is real that's why this film is so terrifying is you know especially living in California where our water is not that clear a lot of the times you don't know what's under you so that fear of the unknown that's what makes Jaws so scary and with the score and everything and the simplicity of it I just don't think it needs a remake but that's not what Hollywood listens to they listen to demand and I do think if Jaws came back that people would be interested in seeing it I'm not so sure so, they would I don't know if it would make a ton of money but again you don't need to make it for a ton of money it can be a pretty low budget film today but I just I don't really see a need because the effects won't really make it a different film uh, didn't we see a, a modern remake of Jaws already Godzilla <laughs> <laughs> oh the other thing too is remember Steven Spielberg at the time had so many problems with that shark 
Oh, it works. They, they up, gave it a name, they, too. Yeah, they had to come up with creative solutions to do the effects, and that helped. Like, sometimes a hindrance makes yeah. you get creative, totally. and that created even more the terror. NBA, you didn't see the shark a lot because it looked sucky. It looked you know like a why? rubber thing. Because all they need, you got the three guys in the boat singing the song, they don't want to go home, and you don't need to see the CG shark. I know. All you see is a shot from outside of the boat with the buoy that was attached to it show back up. Yes. And you're already like, oh, sh yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry, John that's, yeah, that's called filmmaking. <laughs> it's like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah. That is so brilliant. Pure <laughs> terror. Pure it's a buoy. Terror. But you're right, though. No they graphics. Try, if yeah. they remade it today, they would focus on and they'd have a giant, huge CGI I know, see, shark. but that's Sharknado. Shark that's Mars. the way to not do it. So if they are going to do it, you know, listen, all four of us, please, and and do it with the filmmaking and simplicity. storytelling yeah. and simplicity is the yeah. key to a Jaws remake. Yeah. All right, what's next? All right, last question, which I like. Robert wrote, just one word, Robert. <laughs> JJ, if a JJ Ab Abrams invited you over to watch a rough cut of episode seven, <laughs> would you go or wait another 10 months to see the finished film? I think this is a great question because some people are like, obviously I would see it. And some are like, John, where I feel like you might wait. Huh? That's tough. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm calling it. There's no way this man would be able to win. In theory, no, I would not. like to say, I want to wait to see the pure <laughs> yeah. experience. You would like to say that. The reality is, forgive my crudeness, I'm heading to JJ's house. I'm stopping at the CVS pharmacy, picking up some hand moisturizer and a box <laughs> of tissue, and I'm going to watch Star Wars today. Today, I'm going to go see oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I, yes, yes. I, I'm going to tell myself at first, John, hold out and wait to see to the yeah. No, screw that. I'm going to JJ's fans. right I, now. I couldn't wait either. I'd be too excited. And it'd be really cool to see the rough cut in all its glory and then have the true cinematic experience again when it's all finished and ready to go. But impatience will always win this argument for me. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, but I, I'd watch it early as well just so then I can brag about it and I'd like lord it over all of you guys. And <laughs> guess what I saw? Oh, we would be with yeah. you, every single day. Dennis would come in the studio. Uh, yeah. Oh, hey guys, have I mentioned that I've seen Star Wars? Yeah. Yes, Dennis. Every day for the last three months, Dennis. Yeah. Thank you. You know what though? Here's the horrible thing, guys. Did I mention I saw Mad Max Fury Road already? <laughs> anyway, it's pretty awesome. Um, I would, I, I would totally go. I wouldn't be like, no, nah, I've got to wait to savor the true cinematic. I'd be there too. I'd be instantly yeah. like, I don't care about that. It's a green screen shot. Yeah. Cool. Oh, it's a hand that's going to be replaced by a weird CG creature. Awesome. The thing about the weird thing would be like imagine if you had the same question posed to you and George Lucas invited you to see, you know, the Phantom Menace. It's a rough cut and you saw that and you hated it. Would you have would you would you be so enthralled by the magic of being in Skywalker Ranch Probably. and seeing all these green screen bit, elements yeah. that you would not really be able to focus on the actual film and even if it was a It's like when they fly people out to press junket. Well, that's what I'm saying, with a press junkety type I'm thing. Still it's in, like man. is it <laughs> is it would it be too much to be like it might would, be. could you be able to say to JJ like, "Man, dude, that movie was fantastic." I know it's it's you still have 10 months to go. You want me to see the movie early? I would guess there'd be a reason you'd want me to see the movie early because you want my opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't want me to just see it and then have to be silent about it, especially on a one on one. I would tell that person, hey, this part, you need more to it, or this part failed. Or if it was fantastic, I would say it's fantastic. I can't wait to see the finished thing. But I would think I would owe it to the filmmaker if you had a very strong opinion, be like, is that. You could even pose it in a very diplomatic way. Is that how that's going to be, or is it that storyline? Is there are you, is there ADR to go, or is is that how it really is? I don't know. That then that opens up a whole can of worms. So you know? show us JJ, and we'll give you our honest. Yeah, opinion. JJ, yeah, like we're so expecting a screening. Lucas, though, if you said anything negative, he'd like call in the stormtroopers <laughs> would come in, grab you, take you. So, right, his official they yes man. Jar yeah. Jar to at your house. Well, I was going to say I'm watching it, JJ. So JJ, JJ what, I, I mean, did. Did Jar Jar have to save Luke at the end? Yeah. It, like, was that Did really Jar Jar have to exist? <laughs> oh, wow. All right, folks. Well, I guess that's all of them, right? Yeah. That's all the questions for today. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to record another one, and that will be up tomorrow on Sunday show. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, guys, lots of great films playing at AMC Theaters right now. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com for your theater showtime and, of course, your movie ticket information. If you want an audio-only version of this episode, look in the description of this video, and you'll find a link to our podcast feed. And don't forget to share this video on your Twitter, on your Facebook. Click the subscribe button. Click the thumbs up button. And make sure you join us every day for AMC Movie Talk as well. I want to thank the guy sitting at the couch with me first of all sitting right over here and girl sitting right over here guys is it gen is yeah. a gender know, neutral term sitting silly. over here mr john schnepp schnepp where can people find you online you can find me on twitter instagram at john schnepp and at tdoslwh and my truly independent movie the death of superman lives what happened will be coming at you may 1st so watch for it mayday
One of our great dudes right here, Miss Amy Rose Eisenbach. Amy Rose, where can people find you online? Amy Rosie, but that's so feminine. It doesn't feel right for me right now on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you, guys. Hey, I like to say dudette. 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 Of course, Mr. Dennis Zen. Dennis, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Think Hero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZENG. And you can find me on the various social media networks just at John Campia. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia for AMC Movie Talk. And until next time, or mailbag. Bye bye. Hey everyone, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It's free and helps you stay up to date with all the latest movie news, as well as our daily AMC Movie Talk show. Also, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with all of our special promotions, contests, and prize giveaways.